Hi guys, I'm Liviu and welcome back to my channel. Today I am gonna go over the SharkBite system from Fatshark, which is a digital video system from Fatshark. And I open it up and I want to go over it and show you all the nice bits and pieces inside of it. I have to say from the start that um, I already like this product but you should make your own opinion at the end of the video. So obviously this is the case where all the electronics sits. We have two patch antennas already built into the system and we also have two SMA connectors for um, two omnidirectional antennas you can mount yourself. Those omnidirectional antennas are not included in the package. I will um, leave this case aside. Here we have a fan plate which uh, is needed for uh, mounting the shark bite to your goggles, your existing goggles. All the fat shark goggles have this fan on top. So this is just a uh, special fan case or cover that you can uh, mount your shark bite to the goggles. This is the Whoop VTX. As you can see, it's quite small. It also comes with an uh, adapter board that you can um, try and uh, wiggle this uh, VTX onto a bigger frame. But my opinion is that this board was specifically designed for whoop style um, quads or toothpicks. It has 200 milliwatts max output power, but I will go over this in detail under the microscope and see what we can find there. We have a run cam camera uh, together with this one. You have four connections on the PCB here, ground, power and RX TX for a serial connection to your flight controller. And you also have a special board that you can control the menu and the power output and so on. But all later in the video, you also have this um, power cable thing going on that you can use to plug in a LiPo here. Most definitely they have a special uh, regulator inside this uh, big chunk of uh, black plastic to lower down the voltage and we have two cables, one for the shark bite system and one for the goggle itself. But you can power them however you see fit. And the start of the show is the SharkBite receiver end, which is this shiny board here. And this is a two board construction. As you can see, we have here a board to board connector. Let me try and disconnect them. Okay, so this is the, the two board layout design. On this board we have the SD slot, HDMI output, power input and the wheel which you can go through the menus. And you have also a um, connector here for former upgrade. So, yep, nothing uh, too fantastic on this board. We have here an uh, HDMI IC and we have here an, um, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a specific um, processor that um, writes on the SD card the videos. I really don't know what this uh, specific uh, processor is here, but the star of the show is this one which is the main board. You can already see here the patches which are made by Immersion RC. And what we can see here, we have um, a fan connector, a Spartan 6 uh, processor, most definitely RAM. We see two ICs made by DiviMath, which is actually the video encoding and decoding uh, ICs. This is a system on chip design specifically for this uh, digital video transmission. It's uh, HD0. You can find more info on, uh, on the internet. And we have two RF transceivers, one here and one here. And obviously we have um, 
one connector for the patch antenna and the SMA I was talking about. But what is pretty interesting is that we have two complete separated video signals arriving so that they can make a better decision on uh, which signal to choose from. On the other side we don't see much other than um, a flash and some decoupling capacitors for all the processing, maybe something related to power over here. That's it, nothing else on this board. But believe me, it has a lot of processing power on it and on a future video I will uh, even go through my uh, first initial thoughts when uh, flying this. But this was just the basic introduction. Now I want to take this board under the microscope and inspect it more and see what quality this PCB has. Okay, so let's take a look at the first PCB, the one which doesn't have all the processing on it. We can already see here the SD card slot, a ton of decoupling capacitors, regulators and all the jazz. This is the board to board connector which is a very solid one, I like the design. We have here the HDMI connection IC, this is the HDMI port, we have a flash memory, we have the jog wheel and here a bunch of voltage regulators because for all those processors on the other board we need a lot of voltages so I can see already one, two and three regulators, switching regulators, here another one and on the other side nothing except this I see here which seems to be related to the firmware connection and obviously we have the power connector here and nothing else on that side and on this side we have this um, REM processor I don't know exactly what this processor does. Uh, I suspect that this one handles all the firmware and also the, the recording on the SD card and so on. And we have nothing else on this side. So if we go to the main board, we can already see here this Spartan 6 from uh, Xilinx. It's definitely an uh, FPGA processor. We have here RAM for it. And if we go to the right side, we have the DVMAT DM5680. And this handles all the digital video transmission. This one is coupled with this RF transceiver. This is the RF transceiver or receiver. It has two balanced inputs. We have an adapter switching from balanced to unbalanced, a filter and here we have a low noise amplifier which amplifies the signal coming from the antennas so that the RF receiver, transceiver or whatever this uh, IC is has enough signal for it to process it. We have obviously two low noise amplifiers for each antenna. This is the SMA antenna and this is the connector for the internal patch antennas. And if we go to the other side, we see the exact same topology. We have the DVMAT DM56A0. We have the RF chip. We have the same lines converted to unbalanced and we have the low noise amplifiers amplifying the signal from the antenna. And I have to say I'm really surprised how this topology works. We have two completely separated RF receiving sections and I suspect also that the data coming from the DVMAT uh, containing the video enters the FPGA and somehow we have a lot of uh, switching going on and choosing the better signal but um, yeah I'm pretty curious actually to test out more the system after I install the VTX into a quad. If you look closely here you will see all these traces going like this 
and this is because we have digital signals here and if you have a shorter trace than the other one you can um, have issues in the digital realm so this is why they uh, snake it like this so that the, um, the final length it's the same with uh, the pair of uh, that digital signal so that nothing has uh, delays or stuff like that you can see here all the decoupling capacitors for the main FPGA processor and obviously they are placed right on the back side of the PCB to, to have them as close as possible to the pads this is uh, good practice and we have here the board to board connector as I've said earlier I like very much how they uh, managed to do it but what can I say overall this PCB is uh, pretty neatly designed obviously being so densely packed with uh, processors and RF stuff it will get pretty hot so this is why we have a fan on the case to cool this thing down and yeah if you have any questions related to this uh, PCB leave them in the comments section and I will try to answer them this is a very nicely designed PCB I like it so yeah good job Fetchark let's uh, go now to the VTX okay so this is the VTX the small one which is intended for use in whoops and the toothpick like quads and we can already see here the power section I suspect here are some uh, filtering stuff we have the switching regulator we have um, Toshiba MCU which I presume it's holding the, the firmware we have the same system on chip that is uh, handling all the video encoding and decoding which is the DVMAT DM5680 the same one used on the receiving um, module but we also have here a DVMAT DM6300 which I could not find information on but from what I can see here, this is the IC handling all the RF stuff. After that, we have here a uh, filter and we have an RF amplifier. And this RF amplifier is capable of more than 200 milliwatts. I don't know how Fetchark is dealing with uh, the power. Maybe they chose just to, to keep this a little bit lower but I suspect that this one can handle up to 500 milliwatts without any issues or at least this is my personal thought there are some thermal stuff to think about because we have here a lot of uh, heat generating ICs so maybe more power on this RF amplifier would mean a lot of more heat going on on this board but hey what can I say the only thing I see wrong on this PCB is just uh, this um, connector which is crooked a bit but things can happen in um, component placings so yeah doesn't matter that much on the other side of the PCB we can see a lot of uh, capacitors for decoupling crystal oscillators some sort of silicone water resistant stuff I don't know the the logic behind it maybe they could have used this on the whole PCB I don't know this is the copper section for cooling down the RF amplifier we have a big ass uh, switching regulator happening here and well that's it we have two zip tie holes for clamping down the antenna connection and camera connection you can see the FCC ID here so this one is uh, definitely FCC compliant and we have here the um, the connector for the um, controlling PCB which is this one we have a small LED display and two buttons actually a joystick and a button again I like this PCB a lot I like how they managed to make these breakable uh, corners I will use it like this because uh, I don't know I think I will install it on a 5 inch or on a whoop I'm not completely sure what I want to do 
So this was my uh, short teardown and overview of the SharkBite system from FetShark. It is a digital video transmission system with zero latency. I will make another video where I will fly the system for the very first time and tell you my honest opinion about it. I have to say I feel a bit disconnected when uh, using the DJI system even though the image quality is uh, superb but um, this uh, variable latency just makes me revert back to analog every time so I am very anxious to fly this system because at least in specs it feels like a glove on my hand so yeah let me hear your thoughts about this system what do you think about it thank you very much guys don't forget to press that subscribe button for more content in the future and also if you have opinions about what type of videos I should make just uh, write them in the comment section and thank you very much See you next time. Bye.